Welcome to Unit 3, Lab 4, Page 1, Creating Bar Graphs. In this project, we're going to create a tool in Snap that will allow us to visualize a data set. We're going to use plenty of abstractions as well as the higher order function, map. This page is going to be broken down into a few videos because there's a lot to cover and it's all very important. Imagine that you went around to every single student at your school and recorded their gender, their age, their height, what kind of phone they use, what TV shows they watch, what their Instagram name is, what grade they're in, what hair color they have, what their shoe size is, if they have any siblings, where their parents are from, and you had thousands and thousands and thousands of data points. So if you're looking at all this data, you really can't do anything with it. You're just going to see a whole bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of words, but just by looking at the data, you can't interpret anything from it. But if you can create a tool that transforms that data into something visual, perhaps then the data can tell you something. You may discover that on average, ninth graders are two inches shorter than 10th graders, or that the average height of an 11th grader is five foot seven, or that more seniors have iPhones than 10th graders. Large data sets give us an opportunity to identify potential trends that may exist in the data or make connections that otherwise wouldn't be made just by looking at the numbers. Computers are really good at collecting data about everyone and everything, but it's up to us, the programmers, to do something with that data so we can learn something from it. Let's take a look at Instagram for just one second because a lot of people have Instagram accounts. Instagram has thousands and thousands of data points on every single one of their users. They know your email address, they know who your followers are, they know who your friends are, they know who you follow, they know what you've searched for, they know every single picture that you've double tapped and liked, they have every single DM that you've ever sent or received, and they even know where you've been if you've tagged your location in pictures. Now you might be wondering, why does Instagram care about all of this data? But what they do is they take this information and they create a profile about you so they can kind of predict what you're going to like and then show you ads that you might be interested in. This is how they make a lot of money. Another thing you may not have considered is that a few years back, Facebook actually bought Instagram. So now Facebook has all of that information about all those Instagram users and they can make connections between Facebook users and Instagram users. Now, I'm not telling you all this to make you delete your Instagram accounts or Facebook account, but they're just things to consider as we leave our data all over the internet. In this lab, we're given the carbon dioxide emissions data of various countries and the carbon dioxide or CO2 emissions per capita or per person. We're also provided with a pre-made constructor of an abstract data type called data record, along with a couple of selector blocks for that abstract data type. We also have this max of list reporter block, and I would suggest that you check out how the blocks work by right clicking on them and selecting edit. In number three, we have to develop code for the draw axes block. So we have to create a way to draw the horizontal and the vertical axes, starting at the points provided in the block at x0 and y0, which are supposed to represent the coordinates of the origin. So let's get to it. Let's start creating our draw axes block by editing it first, because as of right now, there's nothing inside. So we gotta do this from scratch. What I would recommend is making sure that our pen is up no matter what. So before we start drawing any axes, we wanna make sure that the pen is up before we start drawing anything. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to the origin at x0, y0. So I'm gonna to go to the motion palette and bring in the block that allows me to go to a specific coordinate on the stage and we want to go to x0 for the x value and y0 for the y value. Now in number three, it also mentions that x0 and y0 should be global variables so that every other block can use them. So let's go into our variables palette and let's make sure we set those variables globally so that every other block, every other script can access them. So x0 and y0 have to be set to x0 and y0 from the input parameters. To draw the y-axis, we can use the input value for vertical height and move the sprite up that far from the origin. So let's put the pen down first before we do anything else, because we're already at the origin. So we put the pen down, and then we're gonna change the value of y. So we'll use the change y by block, and that is going to equal the vertical height. Now I just want to make sure that we draw the y-axis going upwards, so towards the top of the stage. So I'm actually going to try running this block right now. Let's see. 
And great, it looks like it drew it perfectly. It's a little bit thin, but that's okay. Now next, for the X axis, we wanna make sure that we go right back to the origin. I could actually lift up the pen before I do that. I wanna lift up the pen, and then I wanna go back to the origin, and then I wanna change the X value, or change the X position, so not set, but change X, by the horizontal length. So that should move the sprite over to the right, and we should have our axes drawn. So let me hit apply, let me hit OK, and when I run this, it doesn't draw an x-axis. Now why is that? I think the problem is that we never put our pen down before we started drawing the x-axis. So we gotta make sure to do that, otherwise it's not gonna draw an x-axis. So I'll hit apply, I'll hit OK, and there we go, we just drew the axes. In number four, let's end this video by exploring the label block included in the starter project. The label block is actually a bit more complex than what we're used to seeing inside of blocks. It's a perfect example of abstraction because we only need to know what the block does and how we're gonna use it and not how it works inside. Its complexity is abstracted away from us. For those interested though, label works by running a JavaScript function using two inputs, text and size. Then it determines where the sprite is on the stage, how it's oriented, and then stamps the letter from the text parameter accordingly. So let's get out of this for just one second, and let's run it and see what happens. So it just labeled hello on the stage towards the bottom right near the end of the x-axis. So let me move my sprite to the center of the stage. Let me clear everything, and then let me hit label. And there we go. It just drew a label of size 18. If we increase the size to 50, let's say, and I run it again, it writes a bigger hello. And I can change the text inside here. In the next video, we'll continue by figuring out how to change the direction of the text and creating our own block to do this.